All right. Well, hello everybody that's watching this video. Everybody that's uh, emanating in this word. Everybody that's been here, coming here, going from here. Um, I'm glad to have gotten through another day. Um, just giving my daily testimony of uh, going through the ultimate leap of faith here. Um, with Christ, I feel like this is the greatest leap of faith that I've gone um, after the Holy Spirit communicated with me that um, I need to quit my job. And this has been a very extensive uh, journey already um, from Monday. Um, Sunday was the day that um, I was really like being communicated with that I needed to make the move. Um, Monday was the day that I did it, and then yesterday was the first day in action, and I noticed some things change at work that were pretty pertinent. I mean, I'm starting to, like, see through the eyes of God in a way, if you will, like the Holy Spirit's communicating with me, and I feel, like, remorse for for like not necessarily I guess remorse isn't the right word what it is is really like I feel conviction for other people that the Holy Spirit puts onto me and it's not like my own personal conviction but it's more like man Lord I really pray that these people repent if I should find me today too but it's, it's like this it's this feeling the Holy Spirit gives me where it's like man Lord I really wish these people would repent you know like I really pray these people repent and I'm like kind of silent up at work i just don't really cave to sin as much anymore um i did for a while there and uh it was bad i mean i'm still a sinner don't get me wrong like it's most to all up here and um it's a very hefty thing i'm not any less a sinner than anybody else in this world I just um, have started picking up more and more on how other people are very open with sin and it's almost like I feel the conviction for them that they don't feel and um, it's not something that I'm proud of because it hurts to feel this conviction for other people in the placement of sin where I feel my own conviction as well. Um, today was insane. Honestly, I made, I don't even care about how much money I made today, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, because the money doesn't matter. My progress with Christ matters. Um, I was very radiant with the Holy Spirit all day, and it was amazing. I mean, it was absolutely fantastic feeling the Holy Spirit as heavily, oh, thank you, Jesus, as heavily as uh, I was today. It was just wonderful. Um, made today go by super smooth, almost effortless. Um, I will be honest, there were some points where I uh, definitely, the devil definitely, like the enemy really tried to take over. And, uh, yeah, right, right, I say that. And got close. I mean, really close. Like, there were points where I thought about cutting in the cord today, and I didn't. And it was because, you know, the Holy Spirit was like, ah, ah, nope, you're rid of them thoughts. Those thoughts are not your thoughts. You, those, that's the enemy talking. You already know what your mission is here. Just follow my voice, follow me, you know, like this is where I want you to go. And I essentially, you know, followed the Holy Spirit. Um, I prayed after I got off of work. Uh, thank the Lord for another day as, you know, we should all be thanking the Lord for another day. We got to breathe today. The sun, the sun wasn't out in the world, but it, you know the light was in our hearts as Christians, as not religious even Christians, but spiritual Christians. You know, we were we were blessed with another day. We got to see what the Lord had in store for us today, and that's amazing. But um, as I was praying after I got off of work, I asked for a prayer or a Bible scripture that I could put into a video because uh, I know I'm doing daily testimonies, um, just letting people kind of on the inside. Um, I will say though, this was the hardest day 
that I've had so far. And I am quite honestly not, I mean, I am looking forward to where God's taken me. But, I mean, you know, the flesh is like, oh, I'm not looking forward to any of this, you know. Like, I really, I'll be real with you. I'm scared. I'm so scared. And fear is not going to drive me into what I do. But I'm very fearful of this whole process. And I really, 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 really am putting my bets on my faith. More than I'm putting my bets on any of this fear, worry, and doubt. Because being fearful of me, I'm like... Oh, jeez, forgive me. Being fearful of me, like, oh, uh, you know, like, I have to stay at this job because how am I going to pay for my bills? I mean, I can't even pay for my bills right now anyways. What am I going to do? Stay in a position where I can't pay for my bills and keep working towards that fear? The fireworks are going off. Uh, July 4th is tomorrow as well, so happy early Independence Day. I do plan on, I do hope and pray that I will get to make one tomorrow, and I plan on it. You know, the Lord blesses me with another day. Um, yeah, it's just like I'm going into this faith and I'm walking in this faith more than I could ever walk into fear. And I feel like that's the change that's happened here. And I'm changing the way that, you know, not me changing the way, but I'm putting my faith down in God. <sighs> God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus are changing my, he's changing my life. And changing the way I see things and changing the way that I go about things. Like, all of this is a blessing. This house is a blessing. My car is a blessing. This couch that I'm sitting on is a blessing. This Bible in my hand is a blessing that I've been blessed with on the Lord. You know, like, I've surrendered it all and I will continue to surrender this all to Him because He's the one that blessed me with this, you know. And it's just so great. He's the one that provided this for me. Um... So let's get into the scripture here. Um, the scripture of the day today was Ezekiel 6, 9. And that was what I prayed. I was like, Lord, I pray that you may, you know, like, I, I thank you for this wonderful day. You're a miraculous Lord. I pray that you bring me a scripture that I can use in my video that I make tonight, you know. And, um, yeah, he gave me Ezekiel 6, 9 was what I heard the Holy Spirit bring into me tonight. And 826 is where we're going for this. 856, 846, 836, 832, 830, 831 is where we're going. This is a New International Version Bible. Um, probably I don't know like I said this is the one that I got while I was in jail that's what it looked like yeah, fireworks going crazy alright let's get into the word here shall we Ezekiel 6 chapter or chapter 6 verse 9 then in the nations where they have been carried captive, those who escape will remember me, how I have been grieved by their adulterous hearts, which have turned away from me, and by their eyes, which have lusted after their idols. They will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices. Now, when I say the Holy Spirit has been working through me today and has been, thank you for the word, Lord, has been putting in me the sight of God to see this how people are idolizing themselves one or idolizing the money specifically which is why I'm like I don't care about how much money I made today I care about the fact that I got to connect with Jesus as heavily as I did but the when they it's nuts when I see and the Holy Spirit works for me to see what these people are doing it's ridiculous it's crazy I mean, like, I don't agree with anything, I mean, other than conversations with me for some reason, because I feel like the Holy Spirit is working through me to put on them the conviction that they should feel for their sins, and then they're just like, they don't want to, a lot of people want to reject me because they don't want to actually own up to, like, 
what they are feeling convicted of and it's the sin like you should know that it's sin that you're feeling convicted of like repent and you will be forgiven like there's no problem with repenting for your sins you know and this bible verse kind of like brings a confirmation and the holy spirit communicating with me that this is the bible verse that you know comes about it is it's that same basis is like they will loathe themselves for the evil they have done and for all their detestable practices you know, I'm a server. So like a big thing about serving and amplitude is just by the like will of themselves, you know, like they don't worship God or, you know, if I'm talking to God with people, I feel as if they're like using God as a coax, you know, like thank the Lord, thank Jesus, like just a coax to the next thing, you know, and they'd be like, all right, cool. Like, thank you, Lord. You know, like I pray that you know, they're just throwing that out there. And I mean, please give the God the glory for everything good and true in your life. You know what I mean? But like at the same point, like you should be like having a relationship with Jesus too, man. And having like the Holy Spirit, you know, praying the Holy Spirit comes through you. That's just as important. Like I have no negative judgment on somebody that glorifies God and prophesies God on his word. But I, you know, like as a Christian, you know, like not on a personal opinion, but the judgment of God is, is that you want to you know like have a relationship with jesus because you know like nobody gets to the father through me i have a relationship with jesus so you can get to the father right if that's not a, at least one reason another reason is is that like he's the one that died for our salvation you know we need to have a relationship with him so we can be saved too and like that doesn't mean use jesus to be saved all right like if you're using Jesus for coax, if you're using Jesus for your excusings, if you're using Jesus for this or that or the third, you know, that's one thing. Like, that's that that's it. That, that's not it, you know? Now, saying that you've been, like, being drawn by the Holy Spirit to make a decision in your life, I feel like that, that that's a completely different shamble. Like, let's go to... Um, uh, hold up. I, I do. I, I want to call on the Holy Spirit for this because the Holy Spirit might be able to help us with this, you know? Holy Spirit, thank you for this wonderful word. And Lord, thank you for this wonderful word. Holy Spirit, I pray that you bring me a new word to show these people and show the kingdom, Lord, that we can continue on this word and really read into it. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Your amazing works and your miraculous works always, always show how faithful of a God you are. Hallelujah, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray you show me this through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I just got something. But for instance, like to show that like we should have a relationship with Jesus because that's extremely important, you know? Extremely important. It looks like we're being directed to... Uh, Believe it or not, we're actually being directed to a book in the Old Testament, which is crazy. All right, so Ezra 9-2. Ezra 9-2. So this is what Ezra 9-2 says. They have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons and have mingled the holy race with the peoples around them, and the leaders and officials have led the way in this unfaithfulness. Now, this really has nothing to do with Jesus. So I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure what the Holy Spirit is trying to tell me with this one. Read 9.3 is what I've heard here. Now, like I said, like I've said in previous videos, I could just be completely schizophrenic here. But the fact of the matter that this is relating very heavily, that first verse was to what I had been, like, sensed, or what I feel the Holy Spirit, like, you called upon me to read, was definitely related to what I had been through today. Now, and that what, you know, the Holy Spirit wanted me to share, what I prayed on. Now, this right here, let's read, let's read 9-3. When I heard this, I tore my tunic and cloak, pulled hair from my head and beard, and sat down appalled. 
read 9-4. Then everyone who trembled at the words of the God of Israel gathered around me because of this unfaithfulness. Hold up a second. Give me just a moment. All right. Well, sorry about that. Um, it probably won't show up as a pause. It definitely won't show up as a pause on here. But um, uh, uh, I had a neighbor to deal with. I honestly, if nobody's ever knocked on my door, so this was a bit of a surprise for me, really. Um, so here, let's get in there. It's it's amazing how when we get a like the word of the gospel like the devil intervenes somehow i'm not saying this person was the devil but like the devil sends distractions so and the leaders and officials have led away and let's let's read this whole passage one more time here so we can get back on track with the holy spirit so ezra 9 chapter chapter 9 verse 2 through 4 they have taken some of their daughters as wives for themselves and their sons and have mingled the holy race with the peoples around them and the leaders and officials have led the way in this unfaithfulness when i heard this i tore my tunic and cloak pulled hair from my head and beard and sat down appalled then everyone who trembled at the words of the god of israel gathered around me because of this unfaithfulness of the exiles and i sat there appalled until evening sacrifice in a sense of the form the god of israel being the lord could in this form it's not specifically in this bible emanating that this is jesus but what we can really like circulate on here is that jesus was god in the flesh so there is an essence of relation here now the big thing that really really brings forth right what i'm sensing and hearing in this is that what we've talked about here what i've talked what the holy spirit's been communicating through me on the basis of like seeing through the eyes of god the sin of other people the unfaithfulness of other people or the unfaith of other people you know what i mean where it says that because of this unfaithfulness of the exiles and i sat there appalled until the evening sacrifice like it relates to what we're talking about here in in the openness behind the scripture. Um, really, I, I just wanted to check something. I'm just getting distracted here. Forgive me for that. Um, we really came down and saw that Jesus is working through us whenever we accept him to see other people's unfaithfulness and other people's unrighteousness. But what we should do, which I'm not doing, and I take complete, like, we're not perfect. We are all sinners, and I am, you know, I'm faithful that eventually I will <coughs> be bold enough to, you know, strike, strike down and say, hey, that's kind of sinful, man. You know, like, you could do better. But I already know that half of these people are not believers, you know? Like, I love thy enemy, but I don't love thy enemy's ways. I'm very hateful to wicked ways. That doesn't mean I hate the wicked, you know? I pray that they are saved. Just as we should as Christians. You know, just as we should loving Jesus. Because Jesus even, you know, wants us to love the wicked people. But... What this shows and emanates is that, you know, like, like, when you see people being unrighteous, you know, not moving by faith, living by faith and accepting where their salvation comes from, you know, um, when they're just, I guess, free balling off of mercy, free balling, if that's a term, that's, I could feel like that was not the term I meant to say, and that was very... It, like that could have been construed inappropriate it's like free loading there we go that's the lord i was looking for please forgive me for that um free loading off of um off of like other you know uh god's mercy and the lord's mercy 
um, you really start to see like what Jesus is wanting to implement into you off of other people's lack of faith. And it's a really sad, a really sad and really faith loss inducing placement of the form. But we can all, we can all do a part better by helping people be saved and grow the kingdom. Now, when we put our faith into Jesus and the Lord and the Holy Spirit, that we can do that and we pray on it. The Holy Spirit will bring that forthright into us to put into our ministry to save other people. Now, I've noticed that for me personally, that's something that is building right now by putting more and more faith in. And remember, it is not by your words that you are faithful, but by their actions that you can show. Like, words are to face as actions are to truth, you know? And like, I say like a lot, I've noticed. Um, if you take your, if you will, truth from your actions, like your actions are your truth, right? And your words are either backing your actions or they're completely different than what your actions are. And, you know, like as Christians and as followers of Jesus, we should follow Jesus with our actions, not just our words. Our words obviously should too, right? But if our actions, which are putting faith in the Lord, are where we, you know, find our truth, then the words will follow. If we're truthfully following Jesus, then our words will follow our actions. And that's something that should be meditated on. Now, something that I feel like we could do better as Christians and not, I mean, me personally, first and foremost, but we as a whole could do is humble ourselves and understand that being comfortable is something that is keeping us held back from understanding our faith. And that's a big part of what's happened in my personal life today with other people that have been sinning and not repenting and not feeling the conviction is because they've gotten comfortable in their sin. Now, getting comfortable in sin and getting comfortable in the word and getting comfortable with Jesus are completely different things. When you get comfortable with faith, that's a completely different comfortability because you're uncomfortable with, I'd say, pretty much everything else around what faith is. And that is a big part of, I feel like, being a progressive Christian in this day and age is finding the comfortability in being uncomfortable because of faith and having faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost will cause you to be uncomfortable with everything that is of this world and of the flesh. And that's super important. You know, like you, you should really, we should really be better about humbling ourselves as Christians to understanding that that uncomfortability is a set and present. I'm feeling this now. And this is an anointed message. This whole message is. And we, we can all contribute to the kingdom by doing that part and in being uncomfortable we can like being uncomfortable with worldly like things and getting more comfortable within our faith we can really i mean really 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 like more and more and more and more build into this relationship with jesus and with god more and more getting to know him getting to know his names the sermon at our church right now the church I'm going to right now is about how God has multiple different names, you know, and how we can learn those names. That's important. That's important. 
it's an important part of getting to know God more and more. And, you know, that's the thing. Building a relationship with God, building a relationship with Jesus is important on this. And these are the things that you're going to witness whenever you start building that. Um, fasting will help. You know, uh, being in church and going to church every Sunday will help. You know, like there are people that go to church every Sunday just to say like, oh, like I go to church every Sunday, you know, I'm getting closer to God. It's not necessarily like that. Like it's great that you're going to church every Sunday to get closer with God, you know, and you should, you know, but it's not just about that. It's about like having like, you know, like a relationship with Jesus, you know, the closer and the more intimate relationship you have with our Lord and Savior, the more that you can be saved and start saving other people. And I'm just now, like, I, I was realizing that pretty heavily in jail. I was just really focused on, like, getting my name right and getting my life right and getting things like this right without understanding who was really doing it for me. You know? Like, I'll be honest with, like, everybody watching this. I'm terrified that in this walk of faith, in this leap of faith, I might end up back in incarcerated again. And even though I'm following the laws and even though I'm putting my faith in God and putting my faith in Christ, you know, like it's still something that I have a hindsight fear of, you know, a very real fear of, if you will. But it's because I fear God, you know, God put me there in the first place. You know, why wouldn't God want to put me there again? And that's another thing. That's why I pray. And you got to pray too. Like, I mean, with your whole heart and your whole soul, and your whole spirit and your whole mind and your whole being, you have to pray to God. You got to pray to God in the name of Jesus. So we all have to go through him to get to the Father. That he may put the Holy Spirit on you, that no matter what you're going through, you can just surrender it to him. And then pray for what you want and surrender it to him. And pray for other people and surrender them to him. And them in your life to him. And then repent for your sins. That should be first and foremost. I mean, oh, you should be thanking him. Give him your gratitude. Thank him. Love him. You know? Adore him. Tell him what really, really gets you going about Jesus. And what gets you going about God. After thanking him. And then repent. You pray for anything your heart desires after that. And he'll answer your prayers. Just He'll either answer them or he'll answer why he didn't give you what you wanted. In one way or the other. That's how he works. The closer you get with Jesus and the bigger relationship you get with Jesus, the more that you're going to start seeing other people's wrongdoings. And instead of condemning them for it, which the devil wants to do, by the way, just can, you know, offer the openness of conviction at some point. Condemning them is not right, because that's the devil's game. But convicting them whenever they ask, Saying like, oh, I feel like this was a little wrong for me to do. Do you think so? Being like, you know, that's between you and God at the end of the day. I'm still going to pray for you. But I will say that God says this and that and that. Rather than being like, oh, that was a wrong move to make. That's sinful. You're being a sinner. You're being this. You're being that. You know, being like, hey, remember, God says this. You know? It's that easy and it's that important. Bible Bible punching isn't it. Opening the Bible for somebody and reminding them, hey, remember what God said here? That's important. I want to thank anybody and everybody that's watching this video. I want to thank God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit first and foremostly for sharing this message with us. So I'm going to be honest, I come into all of these unscripted. I, I, there was, I mean, the one thing that I did bring into this was the, uh, 
was a Bible verse. And that's probably something that I'll do is I'll pray, bring in a Bible verse, and go from there. And I just love the way he works through me. I just love the way he works in general. He's such a such a faithful God. So amazing. We all deserve to know him. We all deserve to have a relationship with his son who died on the cross for our salvation. We all deserve to have the Holy Spirit live within us at all times. I want to close this out with a prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much, so much for everything that you have delivered today, everything that you have brought today, and everything that you have shined upon us today as we have been in this life and been in this journey with you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you may, you may continue being the faithful and amazing God that you have been. And you're a wonderful, wonderful, amazing God. And so faithful, Lord. I pray that all of our sins may be forgiven for Jesus died on the cross for our salvation. So I pray that we are allowed to live and that he may live through us in this amazing life that has been given to us. Lord, I pray, Lord, I pray that other people, people watching this video, uh, Lord, people that are in our lives, in our immediate lives and our lives forward, may be touched by your heavenly love and your heavenly grace, Lord. May be touched by your heart and may see that your way is the truth to get everything that we truly desire in our lives. And Lord, I pray, forgive me, Lord, for, forgive me. Lord, I pray that you may continue to allow me to make these videos. You may continue the people on this the other side of this screen to continue in their path into what they're being called to. Lord, that you allow me to become this prison minister, that you allow me to become this chaplain of where you're calling me to be one, where you allow them to be further and further brought into their calling in the kingdom and be closer in our, our relationships with you, Jesus Christ, and that we may surrender our lives to you more and more continually every day as we take our leaps of faith that you have instructed us to more and more every day, Jesus. And Jesus, I pray that you are with us and that you allow the Holy Spirit to live within us and you live within us, Lord, and that God lives within us so that we may go and we may reach, Lord, and we may reach the points that we are trying to get to, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Pray that you may allow us to reach and reach and reach and stretch and become more flexible with you, Lord. Who and just bring forth right this amazing, amazing will that you have for all of us in the kingdom and grow the kingdom so that your will may be done unto earth as it is in heaven. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that I call forth right. That the Holy Spirit calls from me forth right. In all of our lives, in Jesus' name we say, Amen. I'm not going to ask you to like. I'm not going to ask you to share. I'm not going to ask you to comment. I'm going to ask you to pray. I'm going to ask you to repent. And I'm going to ask you to love. And I'm going to ask you to follow Jesus. Because He's the one bringing in the new, new covenant. He's the one that's bringing in the new, new fellowship, the new, new word. And I just, he just wants you to connect with him. He's such a good and loving God. He loves you. He loves me. And he loves all of this. Have a happy 4th of July. And uh, God bless you. The Lord bless you and be with you as you go through your trials and your journeys.
In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time.